Okay, so, in the ongoing saga of me and Deconverter Man, we've reached a new leg of understanding. Now, one of the things I think you're getting hung up on Deconverter Man, my own personal estimation of you, is that you're really, really into logic. It's got to be logical. Logic this, logic that, logic, logic, logic. So you are hung up on the idea of the supernatural as somehow conflicting or contradicting the laws of logic. It does not do this. So only one, two things to consider about the supernatural, Deconverter Man. You don't need to make it this big boogeyman. If it's supernatural, it can't be rational, it can't be logical. It either exists or it doesn't exist. If a supernatural experience is real, it does not in any way, shape, or form violate the laws of logic. It's just something that exists and happens. Now, I really think, honestly, that's the problem, is that you think somehow in your, your worldview, supernatural means unreasonable, irrational. No, it either exists or it doesn't, period, full stop. So let's take it down to the real world, and I'll point out the same parameters of my experience, and I'll take the supernatural out of it so you can see clearly how the things that I, that I put down are evidence. Evidence. Okay, let's say... I disappear for two hours, I put on a certain song, I disappear for two hours, and I have a tingly arm. My arm starts going tingly. My arm tingles. I go to my wife, you know, every time I put on this song, my arm tingles. She goes, that's really weird, you should probably look into that. Now I've got the same 50 books in my apartment. And I start investigating, I start reading these books. And lo and behold, I find out in the books that I didn't write, some of which were written before I was born, they describe that exact experience that I'm having, and they call it the Shazbot experience. I, what am I going to do, deconvert me? I'm going to go to my wife and go, hey, hallelujah, Jen, what? I think I figured out what the experience is called. What is it? And I'll read the, the book, and I'll say, she'll go, that sounds exactly like what you're having. And then they'll call it the Shazbot experience. I'll go, it's the Shazbot experience. It's that simple. And then further, to further make the analogy, taking the supernatural out, there are 250 people in the L.A. area who have reported similar experiences. I go to a support group and they're all talking about, you know, I put on this certain song and my arm starts tingling. And I go, hey, what do you call that? They go, that's the Shazbot experience, Craig. Guess what I'm going to start calling it? The Shazbot experience. That's powerful and compelling evidence, Deconverter Man. And in order for me to not believe it, in order for me, I would be 150%, keep in mind, the Shazbot experience is real to me. There's a tingly arm that I am not praying to, I am not, I, that is, as far as I'm concerned, 100% real. It is a real manifestation of my arm. My arm tingles. Then I read books that I didn't write, and they tell me it's the Shazbot experience. That's powerfully and compelling piece of evidence that that is, in fact, the Shazbot experience. Then I go to a support group in the area. 250 people in the immediate area tell me that they have an identical experience. They start talking about the experience and it sounds exactly like my experience. I'm going to go, hey, hey, I have that experience. What do you call that? That's the Shazbot experience. Case closed as far as I'm concerned. That's the Shazbot experience. Case closed. I'm having the Shazbot experience. Now, you're still not going to be satisfied. Why? Because you are resolutely committed to the idea I think ideologically committed that there's no such thing as a supernatural. And somewhere in the back of your mind, you know that even though I broke it down in the natural, I'm still somehow tying that into the reality of God, and you just refuse to believe in the supernatural. It's fine. As I said, the beautiful thing here, Deconverted Man, and it's a really, really good thing. We don't have to keep talking about it. I don't expect you to believe me. Probably ever. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think that's points in your favor, but I'll let everybody else decide. No, I think that's stubborn. But probably never believe me. Okay? But I have my tingly arm experience. And I have my book that tells me what it is. And that book confirms the reality of the experience so that the thing that's internal and subjective, internal to me alone, has been identified outside of myself by a book and sourced. That's a powerfully compelling piece of evidence that it is, in fact, a Shazbot experience. Then I meet 250 people in the L.A. area, and they tell me, Craig, that's the Shazbot experience. Guess what I am going to 150% believe almost completely now, that that is the Shazbot experience that I was happening, because their experiences match mine, and so does the thing in the book. Now, I don't expect that to be powerfully compelling to you at all. I don't expect that to have proved anything to you, but here's where it gets really beautiful and good. 
We don't ever have to talk about it again. Why? Because if you adamantly, resolutely refuse to believe that that's the Shazbot experience, come up with a better explanation. Burn and proof shifts back to you. Oh, yes, it does, my friend. And you got to come up with a better explanation or shut up. <laughs> or walk away. Shut up or shut up. Yeah, one or the other. So you adamantly tell me it can't be the Holy Spirit of God, Craig. No way. Under no circumstances. Great, deconverted man. Come up with a better explanation. If you say, I just don't believe you, Craig. There's no such thing as the Shazbot experience, Craig. Well, 50 books tell me that there is. And 250 people in the LA area tell me that there is. So I'm going with that. And, and keep in mind, Deacon Murray, I have the Shazbot experience. I have it. My arm tingles. 50 books tell me it's the Shazbot experience. 250 people in the LA area will tell me it's the Shazbot experience. Why would I believe anything else? You can see how that is unbelievably powerfully compelling evidence for me. And it's perfectly reasonable and logical of me to have concluded that that is in fact a Shazbot experience case closed. And if I'm going to listen to anybody else, some atheist comes along, make it the Holy Spirit, some atheist comes along, even a great atheist, the greatest atheist of all time, Paul Gia comes along, greatest atheist of all time, Dick Verde, man, you're not even close, not even close, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for you to even put yourself on the same playing field. Greatest atheist of all time, Paul G comes along and he says, Craig, there's no Holy Spirit. I'll listen, but he's got to come up with something really powerful and compelling because my experience is 150% real to me. He's going to have to say something that blows my mind. And so far he hasn't. I mean, he's good. <laughs> I mean, so far he hasn't. You see what I'm saying? So, you say there's no way on earth that's a Shazbot experience or that's no way on earth it's the, it, it's... That's, that, that it's the Holy Spirit. Knock yourself out, cowboy. Go to town. Come up. Go, go into your little logic closet. I go into my prayer closet. You go into your logic closet. And you could disappear in your clo logic closet for a long time. Come up with a better explanation. I will give you a fair hearing. Promise. But if you say resolutely there's no way that that is what Craig says it is, then you have shifted the burden of proof, my friend. And I don't think the greatest atheist of all time, Paul Agia, greatest atheist of all time, Paul Agia, could convince me of the unreality of an experience that I'm absolutely 100%, 50% having. I don't see how that's possible. Some little twerp on Twitter asked me the first, with the first two years I was on Twitter, I used to, the first two years ago when I was on Twitter, I used to engage in these debates before I realized they're a total waste of time. Total waste of time, Deacon Vernon, man. They're a total waste of time. But I used to engage in them until I realized that the, the people I was engaged, debating were, weren't listening, didn't, didn't care about what's true, and didn't care about, certainly didn't care about my experience at all. He said, is there any way that you could be wrong about God? I didn't realize it was a scam question. I, I hadn't dealt with atheists at that point. It's a scam question. I'm like, no, see, he's so close-minded. <laughs> so close-minded. He saw, I can't believe this guy is so stubbornly close-minded. No, my experience is real to me, dude. I could probably maybe be convinced that it's unreal somehow, but I can't for the life of me consider any sort of logical argument that is going to pull me off of my own experience. I understand that. Think about how, how, how hard that would be for you to do. I don't think the greatest atheist of all time, Paul Gia, could do it. I honestly don't. I'll, I'll listen. I'll give it a fair hearing, but I don't see how it's possible. So, there we go. That's it for now, kids. And I thought it was a teachable moment. You know, I'll let you decide for yourself. And we can have, we can do this on modern day debate, Deacon Verman. If you want to keep going, we could, we could do this publicly. I'm fine with that. That'd be fun, actually. Be a teachable moment for everybody. Okay, that's all. Amen. <laughs>